And I think in that two years, quite a number of people are shooting at their shots at you, right? Because fine girl, it's not like it's not like a fine girl. It's not like she was just sitting down. She they were shooting shots like this, like. (laughs) Hi outliers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am Duffy Sayo. I am a travel blogger, travel entrepreneur, and I am the host of this podcast. Welcome to the Big Dramas Podcast. This episode is going to be featuring the shops, and this season is focused on becoming. And yeah, I had a wonderful time with the shops. They shared their experiences, most of which you can also find on their YouTube channel and on their Instagram page. Like everything almost in one session was discussed so if you're curious to know more about their story you know what i'm not gonna give too much away just get your popcorn get your water sit down on your chair whatever it is that gets you comfortable just get comfortable and get ready to be blessed get ready to be inspired by their journey and i'll see you at the end enjoy all right thank you so much for today god bless you um i have with me the shops avisola ashi so i want to know what what did you like what inspired your name the shops is that is that the name of like the hashtag of your wedding or what made you choose (laughs) hashtag of wedding was that a thing Mm. when we got married i don't think we had a hashtag i think that was yeah that was was right before social media started doing the hashtag thing um what inspired our name is just the short form of his last name is his name is shofola and we just shortened it to show also um why did you decide to start making videos on youtube by the way before you joined i mentioned um that i discovered you both through youtube and how your story is inspiring my friends and myself as well um is that the reason behind starting or why did you start no well (laughs) no i wouldn't say that wasn't the direct reason behind starting i mean yeah that was always We always kind of wanted to do something together, but it wasn't like, oh, now let's go create content on Instagram. Yeah, I feel like our creative journey has been a very long journey. It started with me having a blog. Without him, it was just Abisola Shof was my blog. It was first Simple Ninja Girl, then Abisola Shof, and I just talked about whatever I felt like writing about. Actually, before that, you were just writing in a journal. Yes, I was writing in a journal and then that journal became a blog. And then um, from the blog, um, I said, you know, hey, why don't we do a podcast? And then we started a podcast together. And then when the pandemic hits, like a lot, we noticed that a lot of our audience were people who were listening to podcasts like during their commutes to work. Mm -hmm. And because of the pandemic, they were not driving to work anymore. Everyone was working from home. So our views on the po- on the podcast, like our listens on the podcast went down. Right. And so it was kind of time to pivot to something else. But I don't think we really knew what that something else was going to be. We just, I just continued doing my blog and then TikTok became a thing. And I was like, oh, do you want to do a dance with me on my page? And he did it. And then people really responded very nicely to it. And then we just continued doing it from there and then youtube got added on and the rest is history so as a couple is that from from tiktok then youtube then instagram so the tiktok dance was actually on instagram because we didn't have tiktok (laughs) we just got like a random trend on tiktok and then um yeah we posted it on instagram and people like responded to it nicely and we just continued to grow our instagram and then we're like okay let's open tiktok and we started tiktok as well and then people were like oh do you are you on youtube i can't find you on youtube i'm like oh we're supposed to be on youtube (laughs) and then yeah Yeah. so having all that platform does that ever overwhelm you because i i have deny the audio start a tiktok because i feel overwhelmed easily like doing oh, i have yeah. a blog as well i have a podcast i have a youtube i have so many things i have a nine to five so i get overwhelmed easily and i don't want to start something i'm not sure i can consistently commit myself to so how did you balance that like how do you guys do? plus you have children jesus <laughs> <laughs> it's a crazy amount of work i'll tell yes. you because the one thing is even though yes the video instagram and tiktok and youtube they all have their shorts and reels and whatnot and you can post the same video to all the different platforms. If you really want to do well, you need to understand your audience on each platform and sometimes create content that is just for that one platform, but not the other ones. And that's that's a lot of work, a lot of time. 
Um, and, you know, I mean, it can be understated. I'm sure you understand the journey, right? Yeah. I think, you know, between both of us, we handle it differently, right? Where for me, I do a lot of uh, the creative, I, I come up with some of the creative ideas, maybe some of the crazy creative ideas, right? And she does more of the same creative ideas. Um, we there was a point where it was like primarily her editing, and then I, I took over doing a lot of the editing. Now we kind of just balance. Whoever has more time, go edit the the video. Yeah, um, and then combining that with work too, it was just whew. yeah, it's a lot. I think for people who are who have the same question, I would say like prioritize one platform, like start there and really put in your best into that platform and then when you feel like okay i have a rhythm going with this one then you move on to the next and i think that's what we did we like first of all established instagram and then we moved on to tiktok and then we added youtube even youtube we're still trying to find that rhythm um and now we just added facebook is the recent most recent thing so yeah it's but there's no pressure right you just take your time and have that rhythm going first and have you ever regretted sharing your story on social media as a couple? Because one thing I know there's the goods, which is the inspiring part for me. And yeah. People coming into your private life and giving you opinions about how you should run <laughs> your life. I don't I think, think there was a time where you, it used you were to get to you, me. You used to get to you. The yeah, comments, the get comments to used to get to me. There were some times, where, like some of the videos, we shot them four different times and published them four different uh, versions <laughs> to explain that this is what we mean and not this, just so people don't take offense. And I'm like, it's great engagement. Let them take yeah. offense. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it's just he doesn't it care. But at some point, I think there was one time that it really, really got to me, especially the videos on talking about sickle cell and mm. some of the comments like i think when our community watch our videos they're like very nice because they get yeah. us they know yeah. you a bit more yeah. deeper and they know a lot more context about you beyond just that short video that they're watching mm. but then the video started to like travel to the universe and, and it started to get like so many views so the comments started to pour in and I, it started to get to me and there was a time where i couldn't sleep like when i see the comments and he looks at me like are you kidding like this is how life is like everyone is just different like this and he'll read the comments and he'll be like no it's not mean there's nothing i'm like <laughs> are you seeing the same comments i'm seeing <laughs> like i mean everyone has different experiences yeah. different backgrounds different ways to process and understand information different ways to interpret information and this is just their own interpretation and that's fine yours is yours and theirs is theirs and they write theirs and you move on and I started to just understand that it's not it's not a me thing it's a them thing like they have their opinion and they put it out there and i move they move like the world goes on so now i see it before i used to delete trashy comments i, I was have, gonna say i was gonna say do you have to need to delete or block i used to before the thing comes in boom delete i don't <laughs> process it but now i just leave it there i just i just let it let it stay so i think typically there are different groups of comments right there's a nice comment everybody wants that there's a comment that is just a statement of facts and there's a comment that is from people's experiences right mm -hmm. so for example we talked about sickle cell and how like we took precautions and all and then someone that had like uh family members die from sickle cell was like don't ever do that that's wicked that's evil mm -hmm. and i get it. it 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 can seem mean right but no they've been through a very traumatizing experience mm -hmm. and so they're saying that right and then of course there are those that they're just haters right yeah they do just say mean stuff for no reason like by the time you're going oh wow your body looks like this and that is that's when it's moving away from you know being talking about the situation and having a an intelligent conversation or a passionate conversation and just being negative right and i think those are the types of comments that you know for me i'm like okay yeah forget they're not like do we delete so we just leave them but at some point now our community actually just comes for them i yeah. know right and that part is sweet <laughs> yeah <laughs> So now talking of like sickle cell, I literally just got off the phone with my brother. He was telling me bad news in respect to someone that he knows. And it made me sad. Um, for your story, your story, like I said, is inspiring. And it's like you guys were able to not just understand the situation, but also plan through it. So for people already in the situation of, oh, they, they, they are S, um, AS, AS, and either they're about to get married or they are married, but not haven't, they haven't had a child yet. What is your advice to them? <laughs> what is our, our advice to them 
I mean, prevention is better than cure, is what I would say. Like, I know a lot of people have said that, oh, you know, there's advances in technology in terms of like, advances in science in terms of like treating sickle cell, but it's always better to not even be in that position where you have to now treat it or be in a position where you now have to start making decisions like, do I have to abort this baby or do I not have to? Like, it's just better not to be in that position at all. Like, there are people who have DM'd me like, what should I do? I'm like, (laughs) <laughs> you know it's like the best thing is to not be in that situation so you do whatever you can to not be in that situation and whatever you can can mean you don't get married if you're not yet married like if that's an option to consider like don't get married that's valid like it's it's really a moment for you to pause and analyze do i is this worth it for me to go through with this so that's the first option and i think that option is very important because it's a true test of is, is your relationship more than just the emotions right because for us right i think going through that experience and co- like the going through that experience right dealing with parents for a period of like a year and a half to two years of just i could tell that my parents and i were not close and they were very unhappy with me but still saying this is what i want to do right that helps me make sure that you know, this is the right person. I had to go and pray and fast and double check and think <laughs> and analyze and do everything possible to make sure this is the right person. Mm. And then not just this is the right person, this is a journey I'm willing to fight with this person, mm. right? And it went, we came out stronger as a result, right? Like mm-hmm. the, the thing that would shake us, I, I'm not <laughs> sure. but it was a traumatizing two years that we had to go through. And that's just option one, right? You don't have to go with that. If you decide it's not worth it, you know, you can still be friends, right? And hey, hey, give each other a hug from afar, (laughs) from near, but you don't have to be in a relationship. And then if you decide, you know, it is worth it, then now you start looking at the options that are available. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of options. Yeah, I would say a lot, but there are options. (laughs) For the people who are already married, like you can decide, you know what? it's not worth the risk let's just not have kids you go do you know do whatever you have to do it's a valid option like if you really want to get married so badly and you're like i would make that sacrifice not to have kids there are people that have done it and they just don't have kids and it's okay and there are people who are like i really want to have a baby but you know what do i do Mm -hmm. you can adopt a child it's valid Mm -hmm. it's so valid like i really want people to consider these options you can also go through treatments. You can do the IVF and you know PGD treatments or what you know the science behind it, which is what we did, um, and go through it. Again, it's not for everyone. It is expensive. It is emotionally tasked. You know, mm-hmm. everyone has its pros and cons, obviously. But these are things to weigh before you make that yeah. decision. And I will say, we actually really considered adoption, right? Like that was actually one option we truly considered. The reason it did not work out is because, as you can imagine, America is so complex. Yeah. To go through, it's actually more expensive to adopt and more lengthy to adopt than to go through IVF. It's not as straightforward, and it's, wow. it was. I think it was even the emotional roller coaster of adoption. Because that the way it works in America is you don't officially adopt. You're like a foster parent First. for a few years and uh, for a period of time. And if everything works, then yeah, they become your adopted kids. You know, o- unless you like adopt from when they're like very young, but then yeah. that process is also just so complex. Yeah, you should talk whoever is considering this talk to an adoption expert or lawyer, whatever yeah. they are, because there were different like different routes for adoption as well. That sounds just- sad. Like, is this something yeah. do you consider coming to Nigeria to adopt? Girl, sorry. <laughs> yeah, <Exactly. laughs> that was what I wanted to do. Unfortunately, at the time we were like on our work visas. You can't, I mean, unless we were going to stay in Nigeria for, I think the period was like a year. You, you have or to something be in Nigeria for a with year the and pers- with the child. child. Yeah. Before oh, you can bring them here. Okay. So, so, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't I, the way it worked out, it wasn't an option. And I can't just leave with a work visa. Mm-hmm. Like, what is going to yeah. take me back? It just yeah. didn't make sense. Like, if we were US citizens, I think that may yeah. have been a, an easier route to go. Mm-hmm. But, yeah <laughs> oh we did we checked we, we checked, checked all the everything options. but anyway all this to say is like one the fact that this and she did one thing does not mean that that's the option for the next person we literally are just like providing information for you to go do some more research go do some more thinking and praying and just really asking god for guidance like for some couples 
them realizing that their sickle cell carriers may be God's way of saying, yo, go your separate ways. And for some others, it may be God's way of saying, this is the test that I'm giving to you and go figure it out. You know, so again, the end goal is we don't want whoever the couple should not have a child with sickle cell and whatever way you do to get there, just do what you can to get to that point that you don't just gamble your way through and bring in a child that has yeah. sickle cell disease. Absolutely. I, by the way, for anyone listening, you should go and watch, because I watched your IVF story of how it was like a lot of roller coaster emotionally for you, just because of the injections and all of that. So if you're curious to know what that is like, please go to the shelves on YouTube to go watch their videos. Um. I was like, while listening to your first advice on go your pathway, that's not an easy decision, for, especially for someone like you guys. So if anyone is looking towards like being like you, it would be to, you know, um, look for the other m- medical ways or... Yes. And, and I will say one thing, none of the decisions are actually easy. Every single one of them are hard. Like the IVF, the reality is that not everyone can afford it, especially depending yeah. on what country you have. Not everyone has it easily accessible as well. So you have to consider like what is realistic for me, for me and my spouse, like, and then unfortunately, if you can't afford it, then you don't have that option. You know what I mean? Like we were blessed that we had, you know, we had insurance and we could, whatever was left, we could pay for it. But if you can't pay for it, then you can't just say, oh, well, we tried, oh, we're going to do this. But then since that's not an option, you just you know yeah. gamble your way through that's not yeah. you know for your first child una talk say una no plan <laughs> unfortunately and that's one thing that people have yeah. to like that's one thing you really have to be in- crazily <laughs> intentional about this like you yeah. can't afford to make that mistake you can't afford to be in a position where it's not a fun position to be in where you're like okay what do i do yeah. I mean, we for didn't 16 have to make that. weeks yeah we and really like imagine people who was. waited that long and then they they find out that the child has sickle cell and then they have to make that tough decision i talk to people in that situation of where you have to make that tough decision so you literally have to do what it takes and when i talk to couples now the first thing i say is you have to when i say triple dose on your birth control like it's not a joke you, mm-hmm. some people were like oh i can't use condoms when i'm married i don't care you have to, if you're making this decision you yeah. literally have to do what it takes to make sure you don't be in that situation that we so, were in let me speak to the guys because i know guys like to you know come up with the reasons that oh it's okay i'll, I'll do what it takes. I'm, I'm an expert though yeah everything. <laughs> guys we know ourselves we know the games we play and the things we say here and i play those games in a sense right that's how we had our first son right and i'm glad for him i'm thankful mm-hmm. that it's very fine but mm-hmm. i can't imagine how i'll feel every day if it turned out that he actually had sickle cell mm-hmm. right I was like, oh yeah, well, but th- th- I wasn't trying to, it was a mistake. Nah, I'm not going to be telling that it's a mistake. It's the son I'll be telling is a mistake for mm-hmm. his entire life, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't want to just take that chance to gamble. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's so much that we can say. I don't want to divert this podcast away, but yeah, you have to do, literally when I say you have to do what it takes, it's what birth control methods, like there's no one single one. I think we talked about this in the latest sickle cell video, like no one single birth control method is a hundred percent so do what it takes i.e layer up and once you're done having kids again do what it takes there is a 100 yeah that was, that was good that was good with my next question and now i assume you put a full stop so what birth controls would you advise once you're saying okay i've done my children it's a personal decision for everyone. <laughs> Just ask any question. Let's hear. You, you can answer it since it seemed like no, I, I wasn't um, going to share our own personal. Why not? I mean, that's I okay. That's one. okay. So, uh, you know, I think initially when we had the first kid, no, before the first kid, it was more of the pills, right? And then, but the problem with the pills is we traveled to Nigeria and we forgot the pills. Not that and, we forgot, but yeah, time changes. Oh, and I guess everything. time changes. Yeah. One way or the other, we didn't take the pills when we had, went to Nigeria. And, you know, the sun was conceived in Nigeria, that kind of thing. And so you want to make sure if you're on the pills, like you need to understand what that means, right? You can't every day, you, you need to make sure you take it. 
on the other hand there's also the iud process right the iud is you know you put it there it's there for about I seven like how years we're educating people on birth control <laughs> it is <laughs> <needed. Wow. laughs> it's there for about seven years but guess what we have a friend that you know after her youngest son is seven years old even with the iud inside a new baby came out and wow. so she's like god where am i starting from again but wow. they don't have the sickle cell issue yeah yeah but it's just you know unexpected on yeah. Yeah. and so if you have the sickle cell now you have to take that precaution plus an extra precaution mm-hmm. right yeah. um the most say the safest method for for guys for example is cut 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 right somebody is trying yeah. to a lot of nigerians don't like to to, yeah. to get a vasectomy is what he's trying to say but you have to do again you're making a decision that is risky and so you're not like any other regular couple you have to do what it takes mm-hmm. to make sure that you don't have a child with sickle cell if that means tying your womb tying your tubes if that means getting a vasectomy you just you have to do what you have to do so once you're done having kids do the needful <laughs> i'm thinking i think i i don't know I might know someone that did tie their womb and probably still got pregnant. So I'm not too sure right now. Mm-hmm. Um, now, like the woman still got pregnant. Yes, I know a lady that she has had like maybe five children and she was probably tired of having children. And then hmm. maybe that was not the particular one she did. She mentioned she did the particular um, birth mm-hmm. control um, process. But I've been the IUD because. Theoretically, okay. they're not supposed to get pregnant with an IUD, but in very rare cases, right? It's like 99.999, and God forbid that you're at that point zero 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 one percent you get. It's it's unfortunate. And yeah. the kid comes out old in an IUD <laughs> like this. Yeah. So with all this decision making and all, I feel like it has had a toll on you emotionally at the beginning and in the phases of having children. Now it goes back to why did you choose each other? Or why did you know Abisola was one for? Why did you know Shay was one for? What were the things you looked out for in choosing? Like, okay, this is my man and this is my woman. What made you so convicted? <laughs> oh, the <any> guiding principles. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that I woke up one day and I was like, okay, I'm going to choose him. Like, I know your story, by the way. Yeah. I know okay. how you guys, yes. But like, what made you yeah. okay, this is my man? yeah so i mean for people who who are listening and don't know us like we we started out at least i started out being friends with him and like we 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 grew a very close relationship together um that literally like essentially was almost like we lived our we lived our lives together i mean we lived separately but we were so our lives were so interwoven like we we literally did everything together from wherever we were um, and I think it got to the point where like you're just so close to this person I just like the natural next step is like duh why aren't you guys getting married you know so I think that's the point that we got to but in terms of like what made me like when we realized okay we have we both have the sickle cell traits like why did I feel like okay this is really the one that's that's an interesting question um, <laughs> do you want to answer that one I think that's tough but I think you know Prior to that, right, she, as she said, we were, we had gotten close, we were very convinced that, we had that conviction that, you know, we were right for each other. Um, before we even started dating, we prayed. I know I know a lot of couples pray and that's fine. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that it's good or bad, but we prayed, right? And it was like, you know, we got to go ahead and we started dating. Um, and through it, like, the re- I guess the way we respected each other, the way our goals aligned, the way our thinking aligned, Right. We kind of complimented each other in terms of where I'm strong, she's weak, where she's weak, or where mm-hmm. she's strong, I'm mm-hmm. weak. That yeah. kind of those were all like those are all recipes for a good relationship. The way we enjoyed each other's company, regardless of what the situation was. Mm-hmm. Um, those were things that were like, okay, these are the fundamentals that I want in a mm-hmm. person, right? A person that I can laugh with regardless of the situation, a person I can cry with regardless of the situation. She's still yet to hear, see me cry. Don't worry about that. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> nah, just kidding. Um, so those are a lot of things. And so when this situation came, so I, I think one of the things that actually led to us, made it harder for us to break uh, the relationship was I proposed. And then like a month or two after that, we discovered, you know, the right. of situation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, oh crap, what happens? Do we break the proposal? Because by then, by the time I proposed, I was already convinced, right? There was no going back for me. Mm-hmm. 
and so it was like the I had kind of passed that emotional and mental hurdle that this is a person I'm committing myself to mm-hmm. and and so when that came it was like that was I, I think that was one challenge but then you know for all the other things I said right the relationships I'd build the friendship I'd build yeah. it was like I don't like there can be a million other people out there but I don't want to build this relationship with them right this is a person I want that relationship with mm-hmm. um like I think ultimately, like so for a guy, right? Can can you say that no matter the number of people out there, you're just going to close your eyes and this is your one person forever? And if you can say that, right? Then I think that was one thing I was able to say that made mm. me say, you know what? It's I'm, this is something worth fighting for, mm-hmm. especially as there are potential ways to avoid this. Mm-hmm. I think the one thing I liked that he mentioned was like just being in sync in terms of like our the way our thought process and the things that like just the way that our brains operate like yeah i get this thing and he gets it too i think if you have to like every night you're calling up your girlfriends and you're like ah, you won't believe what um you know john did today like man why would he like if you're just if 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 something is off about the way that someone acts or you just think that oh why did he spend money on this or why did he you know why did he think it was appropriate to text in the bathroom like if there's just something that's like always throwing you off Mm. I think it's just a red flag. Like you don't, ha- you shouldn't be asking those kind of questions. Like that's not normal. When someone, when your partner does something, you should get it. Like you should get why they're doing it. Like, and everyone operates differently. I think you have to find that person that operates at the wavelength that you operate. Like it's not bad to spend money on a new car. You know, if it's the right, you know what I mean? Like, it's just like, it has to be right for you mm. and them. It has to make sense. Yeah. And, and just to add to that, also, when we say we were in sync on a lot of things, right? It doesn't mean like we were like we're twins and everything no, was the same. No. So I can give you examples, right? Like when we we're dating, I could eat everything under the sun, and then she's a very picky eater. And so when you know we get go to a restaurant, get something, and I'm like, no, just eat it tasty. And she's like, no, <laughs> that thing used to like like burn me on the inside. But then was it a deal breaker for me? Nah, it's a trivial thing, right? So we were in sync in that, but that. In the grand scheme of things that did not matter mm. right or another example is i was the kind of person like i wake up at 2 a.m 3 a.m i'm working on a business idea and all and she was more of like you know a take like chill and calm kind of person mm. right at that at I that time no, she's no longer like that. <laughs> but i mean i was like why Aww. just just well, let's get something mm. done and she's like why i've worked i've had my busy day now it's my time to relax it was yeah i was like i don't understand it right mm-hmm. but was i a deal breaker no because mm-hmm. why we aligned on the most important things mm-hmm. right we aligned on our vision well we aligned on our relationship with god and our values mm-hmm. we aligned on our vision we aligned on how we spend money we aligned on you know right. things that matter that and so us, all yeah. those trivial things i mean they didn't yeah. matter by the way, you guys are influencing relationships. So also, you know, when you mentioned the way you spend money, I, can't, I just remember that I watched a video on how you guys plan your finances, which is really amazing. I love it. Um, now, this question is for Abisola. How did you feel in the moment, the two years where, you know, it seemed like his parents did not accept your relationship? You know, like they didn't accept you, but they didn't accept your relationship. But it might have felt like it was you they did not accept. But how did you feel? Um, not good. <laughs> I don't think anyone likes to know, like, I'm, at least for me, I like to know what's happening and then I just plan accordingly. I think if it was just like, uh, okay, we're not getting married and then I know, okay, I bakamu, you know, like I just, whatever the English translation is, <laughs> I, I accept it, it yes. <laughs> and then I just move forward with my life and I cry the tears and I move forward. I think that for me, I would have preferred to like that, just being in like limbo, like mm-hmm. I don't know what's happening. And at some point, I almost feel like when when you're rejected, even though it feels like you're being rejected, it's not you they're rejecting, it's the sickle cell issue that they're rejecting. You know, it almost starts to feel like, oh my God, is it me, you know? Mm. But, I, but I know it's not, you know, that's, but but again, it's hard to, to separate those things. But mm. I mean, now we've been married for what, for mm. so long that I, you know, I know that I know where their intent was. It just was a matter of time. And, and, and this would be my advice to anyone is like, time has a way of mm. just working things out. Like, even though it may not even be a sickle cell related thing or something that you're waiting for, like, honestly, like in everything, 
in my life i realized like if you just kind of just wait and just just let time work things out it will tell you it will show you more clearly like don't be in a rush to just say okay um i'm gonna ignore this and i'm just gonna get get married or i'm gonna ignore this sign and i'm gonna move to a new city anyway like just let time work things out and it'll be clear whether or not you should move forward with that decision or whether it's just a bad idea altogether but time has a way of working things out you just have to be patient thank you so much so now in the in the two years well, would you say having friends to encourage you helped would you say prayer was the major thing i know you mentioned time when the, the time was two years 365 days times two <laughs> so in that two years how did you manage the emotions oh for me yes for oh, for you. okay um I don't know i was sad a lot of the time <laughs> um to be honest i mean i just i just prayed about it i prayed a lot i prayed so much um i prayed for guidance because at the end of the day i also didn't want to get it wrong like i just really like and i, I don't know if i said this before but i just told god i'm like god i wish you can just just come and just tell me like yes yeah, or no. I, like, I, just, yeah. I literally want to do your will like if it's not your will like psh, yeah. forget it i don't care everything will be fine in the long run i'll get over him so I think just like, I just really wanted to know, like, God, what is your will? So we prayed so much. We fasted. Mm. Um, you took a month apart. Yeah, we took oh. time apart to like just focus on God. Um, mm. And yeah, I just lived my life. At some point, it's like, <laughs> we move, man. Like, I lived my life. I was in school. I did what I had to do. I was in grad school <laughs> then, so. And I think in that two years, quite a number of people are shooting at their shots at you, right? Because fine Ooh. girl. Like, so I said, fine girl. <laughs> it's not like she was just sitting down. She, they were shooting shots like this. Like, and then I How was did in, you feel? I was in New York then. And so she was telling me that on the phone that uh, this person just pretty much was doing all this. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My wife. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm not asking Shay is because I, I I believe like on on YouTube you shared how you know you stood your ground, um you know you was you already made your your mind already and it was about like ah, daddy I'm waiting for you me I've already got in here I'm waiting for you to come and join me, but for you too as a man, how did that feel? I mean it was a bit frustrating, right? Like once again I I can't fault them I completely understand. Like this was something that from the time I I think I remember one of my first memories. I was told that she Magbury Biri A S Wali. Like don't bring a lady that is AS to the house essentially. And so like I completely understood where they were coming from. But then for me, I'm the kind of person like if there's a solution, why are you looking at problem? Mm. Right? Like if there's a way if if your car is not working and you need to get to work. Don't just keep looking at your car that is not working. Call the tow truck, catch a bus, call Uber, just move, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why for me, I did my research and I, I, I took all the analysis to them. I got a doctor friend to explain the solution to them. I sent them the research. They went to talk to their people. And after all the research, it was like, okay, but why are you trying to go to Kaduna when there are options in Lagos, that kind of thing, right? Why are you trying to go the hard way when there's an easier way? And I told him, I get it, but that's because the gold in Kaduna is more precious than the gold in Lagos. <laughs> like, if you get it, right? Hey, energy. So, in the end, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I wanted their blessings. Yeah. I also did not want to compromise on what I knew was right after all the prayer and thinking and the experiences that I had. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and then in the end, like, for me, the biggest thing is this, right? The person you marry, like I see how my parents' relationship are, and I see how together they've reached where they are, mm -hmm. right? In terms of raising kids, in terms of their happiness, in terms of everything. Mm -hmm. And so the person you marry is like the most important decision you right. can ever make. Mm -hmm. So after giving your life to Christ, yes. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> and so it's like if I've found the right person and I that's the right decision. Why would I now go on? Ultimately, this was actually what went through my head. If I found the right person, right, based on all the criteria that are important for a good marriage, while well, I want to compromise and now go and start searching again for someone else, right? right? That was the thing. And so eventually, like, I gave them a year. I was like, okay, great. Second year, I was like, okay, have you made up your <laughs> mind? I've sent you the data. I can send it again. 
Then six months to actually we got married. We planned our wedding in three months and got married in three months. But six months, I was like, okay, daddy, I've given you. I didn't say it to him all, but I think he could tell that. Okay, I've given you a year and a half. Very soon. <clears throat> if you don't make a decision, I'll just send you marriage certificates, that kind of thing. I didn't say that to him, but everything about my attitude said that. And so I think they realized that, okay, he's not budging. He has waited for a year and a half. He had honored us because he wants, you know, what a child is supposed to do. But at some point, if he keeps holding on, then mm-hmm. it's our loss, right? I will not be there to enjoy the special day. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, going into your relationship, how has being a Christian helped you? Like even in marriage, um, that's one question. Second question is counseling. What role has counseling played in marriage and before marriage? Um, counseling, I don't think we've, I think we could do better. <laughs> yes. We, we did a little of yeah, those premarital. Premarital, so. yes. We did, we did the premarital obligations, but not so much after marriage. Um, I think that honestly, we counsel one another <laughs> like wow. ways to i mean she is very easygoing and i am also very easygoing as well and i think what helps us is that we hear each other out like no one person always like like when he he does have strong opinions but when he communicates his goal is i'm trying to explain where i'm coming from and he doesn't want to impose it he just really wants you to understand it and then see if you get it too or what you're thinking as well so i think that we're able to just kind of like have like that kind of healthy exchange like even when we don't agree on things i don't think that there's ever been a case where we're like okay we're hitting heads on something and we have to take it out to a counselor do you feel that way i can't think of one i mean yeah we've had pretty important disagreements but every every relationship work relationship of everything you have disagreements on mm-hmm. things but the goal of disagreement is to arrive at the best position mm-hmm. yeah um, and so, best position yeah. does not always have to be it's me or it's him it could always so be that we reason it together and we come up with a different solution that neither of us were even thinking but the most important thing is just like we communicate about those things and mm-hmm. arrive at a decision um and also like always involve god like always just yeah. pray about everything um always just seek god's guidance in in everything because we don't know it all like our wisdom yeah. is so limited so and i think that other part is kind of like you know in, in everything we try to do what honors god mm-hmm. right and how we raise our kids and the decisions we make yeah there are times we just make decisions right but in general i think our default mindset is let's do something that's in line with God's will, mm-hmm. right? And so while we may not necessarily pray about every decision or read our Bible, that's just kind of our orientation, right? Uh, and so that's kind of how, you know, God is involved in everything around uh, in terms of our relationship. Mm-hmm. All right, thank you very much. So now, um, what is one final thing you want to share? I mean, maybe 30 seconds um, for couples listening. And we'll get your Instagram handles as well for people to follow you. Oh gosh, that's a lot of pressure. For couples listening, your spouse is not your enemy. Your spouse is not the one you should be fighting. I promise you that if you guys like actually work together, you can achieve so much more than if you did like working separately. So just kind of like just put your guard down and try to enjoy and have fun in your marriage. Maybe going outside of the norm to do things like that you typically wouldn't do maybe just taking a walk outside of your house even just that like step out of the house go take a walk together go enjoy the fresh air if you have nice weather but anyway like my point is just like just see your 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 spouse as your best friend and that would change your perspective before you know you're wanting to serve them you're wanting to do things for them um, and it's not all about me 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 or what i want so yeah thank you thank you do you want to add anything, Mr. Shea? Um, I mean, I'd say, you know, if there's anything you're not happy about with your spouse, you know, take a look inside and probably work on yourself. Mm. And you'll find out very soon that it's actually not so much about your spouse, but it may be about you, right? Uh, and then, you know, if there are truly things that you're not happy about your spouse and it's truly not about you, right? Then have that conversation in the most loving way, right? 
but maybe if it's a guy cook the best meal for the person if it's a lady buy the best gift for the person like whatever they're the, the way they receive love but have it in the most loving way because your goal is to build a happy marriage that stands for a long time all right thank you so yes welcome back i hope you enjoyed the session with the shops i really did wish i had a longer time with them because there's so much value that they had to offer because of their experiences that could be of value to even myself and any other person listening i hope you found this session valuable whatever it is that you learned um please feel free to leave it in the comment section did you know the shops before this video feel free to share oh how you got to know them or are you just knowing them because of this video because of this podcast and by the way if you don't already please follow the shops on the shops on instagram on youtube and i believe it's the same on tiktok and yeah now if you found it valuable please share it with a friend let others also find value and you know learn we're not we're not meant to be an island we're supposed to learn from other people that's why god said it's not for a man to be alone because there's so much to grow into when you are with somebody honestly and when you learn from people so yeah i hope you found it valuable and i hope you share this as well so that you don't keep all the knowledge to yourself and subscribe to my channel if you haven't and go watch the previous episode so in this year this is the second episode on the big, big, big mass podcast this year and the first episode was featuring a couple as well that shared their beautiful experiences like all these people i'm bringing them on board because i find them inspiring and i hope you do as well and yeah go watch the previous episode and i'm probably going to link it up here and yeah like share subscribe like share subscribe see you in my next video till next time don't forget to stay awesome stay inspired peace